I'm a, a new Democrat. I'm a, one of the leadership candidates in the race to uh, try to fill in the shoes of Jack Layton. Who's ever heard of Jack Layton? The, uh, here's the interesting thing. How old are you guys? 17. When, uh, when can you vote in this country? When can you uh, be recruited to the army? Well, <laughs> for a one or not. Uh, 17. So you, uh, you can be enlisted drafted before you can vote, which is interesting. When can you drive? When can you have sex? 14. <laughs> 14. Whenever you want. 16. It used to be 14. And uh, under the previous law, when I got into Parliament, it was legal in Canada for a 55-year-old uh, boyfriend to pick up their 14-year-old girlfriend in school. Yeah, it's legal. And uh, a bunch of us in Parliament said this seems strange and pretty gross. So uh, you want to change it? And we did. When we first tried to change it, the government of the day said, well, let's, let's move it to 16 as a level, and that's it. Uh, we said, yeah, that's interesting, because we're what we're actually trying to debate is when can you make a decision for yourself, right? When can you make a decision about having sex, drinking, driving, any of those things that you want to do for yourself? And when they first changed the law, it would have been uh, illegal for a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old to have sex. A 16-year-old would have gone to jail for 8 to 12 months. <coughs> Weird, right? So we had to uh, uh, change the law again and say, well, we're going to make a, a near-age exemption. That if, uh, if that happens, it's okay. There's going to be a two-year window on either side of this to not make it illegal. The, the reason I'm telling you the story is that uh, you folks, once you hit voting age, don't tend to vote. You are, you are the lowest voting category in the country by a lot. What's the highest? Who votes the most? Seniors. Yeah, they vote like crazy, like it's going out of style. And when a uh, government is dealing with an issue, any issue, uh, what to do about education, what to do about the environment, when to go to war. Who do you think they consider most? You or people who vote? Every single time, they are going to defer to people who vote. And you don't vote. And when you don't vote, you're not relevant. You have no power. None. I don't mean like a little. You know what you'll hear from politicians? You'll hear what we call platitudes. What's a platitude? Young people are great. You're our future. I think you're our most valuable natural resource. I love young people. I think you're the bestest. But when it comes time to voting, on a law, when it comes time to writing a budget, deciding how much money we're going to spend, when it comes time to making decisions that governments make, they don't consider you. Because if they upset you, there's no recourse, there's no backlash, there's nothing that happens. No one's ever lost an election by upsetting young people. But that'll change. How's it going to change? How are you going to start to matter a little bit more? Yeah, if you vote. There's this really terrible expression that says, the world is run by those people who show up to meetings. <laughs> the reason it's a terrible expression is because it's true. And a lot of meetings suck. They're boring. Not much gets done, but in politics and in the world swirling around you and the world you're entering, those decisions are made at meetings. They're made by those people who show up. And voting is one of those times when people show up. You got a, you got a government in uh, northern BC is where I come from. Take a map of BC. This is where BC. I get the whole <coughs> northwest quarter. I'm right up against Alaska and the Yukon. And they want, to, uh, they want to put a pipeline from the tar sands right through to the coast called the Gateway. Gateway Pipeline. Anybody ever heard of it? Yeah, Enbridge. That, that cuts right through my home, right through the place that I represent. And there's a number of us that are opposed to this project. 
because they're going to run 1,100 kilometers, three mountain ranges, more than 1,100 streams and rivers, and a 36-inch pipeline with raw bitumen from the tar sands. And when it goes, it'll expand that project, those tar sands, by 30% more than it is already. You can see these things from space already, and they want to make it another third big. And the natives are all opposed. Environmentalists are up in arms. And the Prime Minister sat down a, an environmental group the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and told them, if you oppose this pipeline, we'll consider you an enemy of the state. Think about those words. And you'll be an enemy of the state if you raise an objection towards this project. That we were called radicals when we showed up at some of the hearings and said, we don't think this is a good idea. They said, well, those are just radicals who think that. My friends are the people that this government is talking about. And he says, you are an enemy of the state when you are a radical. My friends are not radicals. They are not enemies of anything. They are for being involved. They are for protecting the environment. They're for doing something about climate change. That's what they're for. But we live in a world right now in this country where I stop recognizing my own government. And that's a bit weird. Anyone ever traveled outside of Canada? Ever gone overseas, the States, Europe, anything? Ever seen a Canadian with a flag on the pack? Why, why do we do that? Why do, we, why do people put the flag on the pack pack when they go away? Show pride? Why else do we do it? To show pride? What? Canada has a good reputation. We got a good rep, right? If you're in Europe and Australia and Asia and people see the flag, what's the general reaction? Yeah, they'll be, they'll be, they might be nice to you, right? They might be a bit, you know, welcoming, show you around, take you in or whatever. The flag's got a good rep. It doesn't come from nothing. That was generations of people trying to be nice to the world. We're the first country in the world right now that pulled out of the Kyoto Protocol. No other country, not Saudi Arabia, not China, not Iran, not Rwanda, not the United States. We did it. Canada. We, uh, we have done things that have hurt our reputation, and as a Canadian, that upsets me. Because think about being in school here, right? You've all got a rep. You've all got some kind of reputation with your friends, your enemies, whatever. If you have a good reputation, that's easy to lose and hard to gain, right? If you're, if you're known as a decent person or you're a good athlete or whatever, to lose your rep is just, it can go like that. To lose trust with a friend? Anybody ever lost trust, lost trust with a friend or had a friend break your trust? Yeah, how hard is it to get back? If I'm a friend of yours and I lie to you about something, if I dishonor you, are you going to trust me again? No. So radicals. Radicals are people who speak up to the environment. Radicals are people who say that maybe we should slow down on the tar sands. Radicals. You ever heard of a, you know what a framing exercise is? You ever done one of these? There's a guy you should read. You're, you're, some of you are studying radio and media. George uh, Lake, Lakehop, you ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the exercise right now. This is a prof out of UCLA in California. <coughs> Brilliant guy. He wrote a book, and this is the first part of the book. It's an exercise. I want you to uh, clear your mind right now. Don't think of anything. Try not to think of anything in particular. Don't think of an elephant. Especially don't think of an elephant. Don't think of the color or the shape or the size of an elephant. Don't think of uh, the sound an elephant makes. Or you know when the elephants walk in line, they got the baby elephants and the big elephants and the trunk grabs the tail of the... Okay, what, what happens for people? What happens? Elephant. Elephant, right? You were thinking, you were thinking, you, you, Dumbo, something popped into your head. This is an exercise that's called framing, right? Where you, you start to talk about a, an issue or a debate or something and you put words around it so that you're in this category. You're for us, you're either for us or against us. Tax relief, radicals, all of that language is powerful language because no one wants to be an enemy of the state, maybe. No one wants to be a radical, do they? But by making the language, by saying, if you show up in a conversation and you say, well, maybe we shouldn't use so much oil, what are you now? What are you? 
by this grading. You're a rat. You just said something that was against the will and direction of the government, and that's a dangerous thing to do. So look at it right now. Our politics is totally broken in this country. Totally broken. I want you to I want you to do this. If you're super pumped up and excited about federal politics, that means 100% is like this. If you're sort of pumped up, that's this. If you're not really sure, if you don't care at all, you're like this. Everybody show me where you are right now. Federal politics, go. Yeah? So we're, we're, we're averaging a couple of exceptional ones, but a lot of, okay, thank you. We have uh, made politics a total turn off. When I was 16 through 30 almost, and I saw something in my world that upset me or made me want to get involved, I never even thought about political parties. I didn't. It, was, it just looked like a bunch of old guys yelling on TV, screaming at one another, and not relevant to my life. And so when we were having uh, problems with the nuclear industry, which I have some problems with the nuclear industry, I didn't join a party to voice my uh, beliefs. I went and talked to an environmental group. In the neighborhood I grew up in in Toronto, there was all of a sudden it seemed like there were tons of people living on the street, way more than before. But I didn't join a political party to do something about it. We went down and volunteered at the food bank. Right? There's not a, the connection's been broken. There used to be a connection, believe it or not, between being involved in politics and changing your world for the better. We, uh, we run a contest in my riding every year called Create Your Canada. And it's a, it's a high school contest. We don't have to say Jeff. We would if we could. And in it, all I say is to the students, I say, write a bill on anything that you want. Anything you want to make the country better. That's the only requirement. Make Canada better than it is. And we'll pick two winners, and then I fly them to Ottawa. I fly these two kids to Ottawa. And I take their idea, and I get the, the lawyers and the drafters in Ottawa, and they write it up into a piece of legislation. And I introduce it into the House of Commons on their behalf, in their name. You know what the first winners were in my first year? And this might be topical. We had three young women in grade 10 who did some research and found out that Canada was still exporting asbestos. Anyone aware of this fact? Who knows that Canada still exports asbestos? You, it's just down the road, yeah? What's the, what's the community called? Asbestos. The place that still uh, is active is Tedford Mines. These young women found out that Canada had made it illegal to put asbestos into our own buildings and our own schools, but we were still sending it to the third world. So they wrote a bill and said, well, let's ban it. And so we gave it to the drafters, and they not only changed my party's policy on asbestos from where we were sitting on the fence because we didn't want to upset people in Tedford Mines, to our party getting onto the right side of the issue, of saying, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It also changed the minds of the Liberal Party of Canada, and changed the minds of 10 Conservative MPs as well. Three young women out of Northern BC. And what they brought was very powerful, and you should know this as young people. I started this by saying you don't matter and you're irrelevant, which is kind of true and a little offensive. Uh, <laughs> But the voices, when these three young women came into Parliament and sat in front of our caucus and then started visiting with different MPs and met with all the NGOs and groups, it was so powerful. It is very hard to tell you guys no when you want something. Very hard. Do you know why I know this? It's because every company selling anything in this world, trying to sell it to your parents, tries to go through you first. And they've been doing it since you were three years old. You ever notice? that the ads and the commercials and the hooks to try to get you to get something were aimed at you and have been aimed at you since you were young. Your voice is powerful when you want something. Well, you want something more than sugared cereal now, right? You want a future, you want a job, you want an environment where you're not gonna worry about it. Your, your voice in the political realm is disproportionately powerful to your numbers. You know why? Because most politicians are they don't know what you're thinking. And they think that your thoughts might change from day to day. You're not locked in with your way of viewing the world. That's a scary thing to political parties. 
It's a scary thing to governments. It's a scary thing to parties. Your, your voice is incredibly powerful if you choose to use it, if you know what it is that you want in the world. And I suspect you know some of the things that you want. For the last 15 years in Canada, students leaving post-secondary education, college and university, have been leaving with on average $1,000 more debt than the year before. For 15 years, the debt for the average student leaving university and college has been going up by 1000 So 15 years ago, the average was 10000 bucks in the whole. Right? It's now $25,000 in the whole, and the trend is continuing on. You guys are getting a light debt sentence by just going to school. So unless you're rich, or think you're going to have a great life without post-secondary education, the system isn't working for you right now. I did a quick survey when I first got elected, because I was a younger MP, I was 31 years old. And I stood up in the House of Commons with 300 politicians, and I said, show of hands, who else in here has got a student debt? Who else in here has got a student loan? And that was it. The people in politics don't necessarily understand the reality that is facing you. And understand the reality of when you come out of school, what is it that you want to do? And we, we got to change that. We just elected a whole bunch of young MPs from Quebec. Thank God. Thank God. The people that were in university and just finished university are actually coming back in now. Into Parliament and raising their voices. And it's a beautiful thing. So, let me, uh, let me say this. Your involvement, your connections, your ability to influence the world is critical right now. You are the most connected generation in history. In history. You are the smartest generation in history. You have access to more knowledge and information than anybody ever has had. Period. Full stop. Now, a lot of that is complete waste, right? You got a lot of access to information that means nothing. Because I'm sure what Britney Spears did last night is fascinating, but it means nothing, right? Who cares whether so-and-so and so-and-so broke up? But you're the most connected generation ever. And the job for people like me is to somehow convince people like you that getting involved can make a difference. And that when those decisions get made in your parliament and in your legislature in Quebec City, that they're going to be decisions that help you, not hurt you. But when this country goes to war without a mandate, when this country backs out of climate change agreements, when this country makes our economy weaker and more polluted, that affects you. That is the world that you get to inherit. And we are handing you a world in a worse state than my generation found it. Fact. Our gift to you. And the only way, the only way we change that trend line and make it a little bit better you guys start yelling at us, telling us what it is that you do want. That's it. This generation isn't going to change its ways unless you make us change our ways. That's just a fact. So, you guys showed up. You were dragged here, some of you, by your teacher. Thank you. Some of you showed up out of uh, keen interest. But know this, that if you engage with me, I'll engage with you back. If you try to bring your energy and your passion to this thing, you'll be met with energy and passion. That's the commitment back. Because more than ever, when I look at my country, I look at my parliament, I'm not recognizing it. And that worries me. And the only way that's going to change, the only chance we've got, is that you guys think that it matters. Because the world is run by those people who show up. Period. That is the reality.